Excellent. This morning I invite you to participate as we draw our service to order with the call to worship taken from Psalm 8. Is it up? Excellent. Shall we? O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea, all that swim the parts of the seas. Creator God, the wheel is turning, a new year beginning, reminding us of our place in time. We are part of this world you made, not merely as separate bits and pieces, but part of the beautiful wholeness of your plan. We are your subjects. You are our king, sovereign and strong. You are a great and good shepherd. We are the sheep of your pasture. You are our savior. We are your redeemed people, destroyed with the sacrifice of mercy. We see the sacrifice of your people, worship and devotion of our hearts. All glory to our Lord, our Savior, and our Savior. Praise be to Almighty Father. Let us continue in song.
Jesus who died and is now glorified, and we want to continue to praise him. There are some new words that you need to pay attention to as we continue our worship together. I love to praise him. that you just inject in there, you know? I think, I, go over those words again. In the morning and evening. Oh, in this new year, I have no need to care. Don't even, don't even bother about caring because you can't do nothing about what's coming. You can't do a thing about what's coming except to put your hand in the hand of the man who controls what's coming you got that and if your hand in his hand you got the best policy so let's go hold on, hold on. don't go yet don't go yet Let me... read the words on the on the last answer with him i know i'll be safe wherever i go no no in the morning in the morning in the evening i love to praise his name when I'm working or at mealtime, I love to praise his name. Whether blessing or in sorrow, watch out. I love to praise his name. You hear that? In blessing or in sorrow. You know why we praise him and bless him? In blessing, we thank him. In sorrow, we trust him. You got it? I call it the two P's of loving God. 
the two keys of loving God. In blessing, you thank Him. In sorrow, you trust Him. I went to a funeral yesterday and I was so sad because of the circumstances and I saw real pain spilling out in that funeral. A life was taken away. And as I saw the mother and the aunts and the wife and the friends cry and wept because of the injustice, all I could say, Lord, is give them the strength and the power to trust you now. Because when you trust God in sorrow, God is worship. Oh, but don't forget the blessing, that's when we forget him. You see, because we think we're entitled. We entitled people. I'm supposed to have everything go right. But that ain't no true either. So in blessing, thank him. But we're going to start in this new year, okay? In this new year, I have a big day. You know, we have to thank the Lord for the inspiration he gives. Those two stanzas were given to us by Pastor Hannah, the Spirit moved on him, and we share in that experience. Let's close this section of our worship. Class. By now, you gather that it's a praise day. Praise him. Come on. Yes.
usual duties of leading worship he as an elder he hardly ever gets an opportunity to do this so I'm going to call on Elder Stuart Kelly to come this morning to um, Elder Kelly yeah Ush, just while I'm speaking you can just help Elder Kelly, Elder Kelly get ready to distribute the emblems I'm really and truthfully, you know, because the reason I add truthfully is because whenever we just say as ministers really, it may not really be really. Not going to be long on this devotion this morning simply because many years ago we decided that we'll introduce the communion moments. And the reason why we decided we'll introduce the communion moments is oftentimes we come into worship with a casualness about worship and worship should never be entered into casually because we're coming before Almighty God now one of the things that you have to come to worship with is you can't come to worship as anybody other than you you understand and one thing God is inviting us as we are to come to worship you see because he's the one that's going to straighten out whatever is wrong with us he's the one who's going to listen and hear what's wrong and he, before you come he knows what's wrong anyway he knows what you need you understand but he needs something he needs you in the acknowledgement to simply acknowledge who he is and part of who he is is he's a wonderful God of grace you understand He's not just a God who get vexed with everybody all the time and want to crush everybody and this, that, the next thing. You see, that's associated with who he is. You see, an offense to God cannot go unnoticed by God. It's not in his nature to, to be able to let an offense just go by unnoticed. You see, because when you offend God by sin, you are offending the very person of who God is. And it's so deep that only God could resolve the offense. You could never resolve an offense made to God other than by coming to that very God who you've offended to say, listen, I know I've offended you, but I also know that there's something about you that would not have me stay away in spite of the deepest offense. So I don't come here in the accolades of my self-glory you see, that's, that's, that's the mistake. You come here in your self-glory, <laughs> it's difficult for God to start to wrap himself around you. Because your self-glory says that your glory is bigger than my glory. And God just don't stand for that. You see, in the relationship with us, guys, all God wants to do is be God. He wants to be God. And part of that, when we come to this moment... We come acknowledging we are sinners. It is because of our sin that this moment had to happen. But it's because of your grace that it can happen. And so we've selected a song that will serve as our meditation. I want you to really look at this song again. Look at it fresh again. Because these guys, these Wesley boys... <laughs> Let me tell you, they got it in this song. 
In fact, they got it in a lot of their songs. You look at the Wesleyan songs. They got it. They got the grace of God in a deep way. And I want you to let this song build your meditation. Because if it does, you know what's going to happen? You could take the glory of yourself and put it on God. Because you're going to focus again. How is it? How is it possible? How is it that you could do this for me? So that at the last part of the song we could sing. And I thought about that at the funeral again yesterday. No condemnation now I dread. I ran into a member that I love very much this morning and he said to me, I said, well, you look like you have the whole weight of the world on your shoulder. You know, the time when I say this, y'all can probably guess who this is. Um, uh, he said to me, well, it ain't that. I just sitting here waiting to die. <laughs> now, you know, he has annoyed me with this statement every single time he made it except this morning. Because it occurred to me, this is a fellow who's so secure that there's no condemnation waiting for him, that he doesn't live his whole life, he go, he crinkled, he aching, he this, he that, the next thing. He said, you know what? The next thing for me is to die, and I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to glory, all because of this. Well, obviously, uh, I have now messed up both parts, the really and the truly, because I was long. So forgive me as we distribute the emblems. Um, I got carried away in that moment of just thinking of God's... Y'all forgive me. Uh, Y'all be gracious to me. And um, this is a feast for God's people. By God's people, we mean people who acknowledge you know something. Boy, let me tell you, I disgust him and I mess up. And uh, You know, I've said I need God. And you went to God in faith and you said, God, forgive me. Jesus, come. I need a master over my life because I'm messing it up. And if you've prayed that prayer of faith to Lord Jesus Christ, you're part of his own. If you own him as Lord. If you know that you're living in a way with God's people where you have not committed offenses to people because if you committed offenses, you can still participate. Go to them now. Get them outside. Whisper to them. Say, man, I won't participate in the breaking of bread. You can forgive me. And get that straightened out. Because this is a fellowship moment with God's people only. That's why it's the only place in the bulletin where we say, you notice it's not congregation. Because congregation are people who are part of God's people and not part of God's people. But all believers. So if you're a believer, you feel free to participate as we meditate on this song. At the end, Elder Stuart will come and pray for the emblems. that I should gain an interest in the Savior's, Savior's blood. Died he for me, who caused his pain for me, who him to death pursued.
Christian's National Anthem, and this is a powerful experience for us as we remember the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being able to come together as your people to remember your precious Son. Oh, Father, the gospel message is wrapped up in this experience. Christ has died, he's risen, he was buried and he's risen, and he's in heaven, seated at your right hand, interceding for us. That message came alive to each of our hearts as Christians, and we thank you for it, that we have your salvation. Oh, Father, even as we remember Jesus and remember what he did, we recognize that there's so many others who don't know Jesus. So as we remember him and we bask in the, in the grace of having that relationship with Jesus because of what he did, help us to remember those of our friends and family members who don't know Jesus who this gospel message need to come alive in their hearts today. So thank you, Father, for the experience. Lord Jesus, we thank you for suffering for us, for your body that was broken and bruised and battered. The song we sang, Amazing Love, how can it be? It blows our minds to think that love could be so strong and so deep, that even as wicked and wretched as we were and are sometimes, 
you still love us. You went all the way. Death pursued us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we eat together, remembering his body broken for us, and then drink for that blood that's been poured out for every single one of us. Amen. My chains fell off, my heart is free, I rose, I went forth and followed him. We're going to get to the part of the service now where we're going to help you to learn how to follow him by putting his word in your heart so that you may apply it to your daily living. Our brother Adam and Brian are not here today, but they've given me some instructions. And my instructions are to have you go over this verse twice. And he said, I must go easy on you guys. You don't have to know it by heart as yet. So I will carry out the instructions as laid out and invite you to participate with me as we look at our scripture verse to remember Ephesians 2, verse 8 to 10. And together we will recite the source and we will say the verse together. Amen? And make sure everyone awake. Shall we? Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now some of you either was reading very well or speaking as if you already have this by heart, Ricardo. So we already know one or two we can call on in the next two weeks. Let's one more time. Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The word of the Lord. As they come with the, the book with the visitors, we want to extend a very special welcome to all of our visitors who are here with us this morning. It is a pleasure to have you here worshiping with us at Grace. This is my assumption that we do have visitors as they bring this book. And this morning we have a visiting with us. I will invite you to please stand so that we can say a very warm and special welcome to you, uh, the members here of Grace. We would like to say a special hello to Annabelle Brown. She's a guest of Jane Culmer. Welcome, Annabelle. We also have visiting this morning Kenneth Wilson. Welcome, Kenneth. Adrian Gilbert. Welcome, Adrian. We have visiting also this morning Nathan, Nathan Burroughs. Welcome. And we also have visiting uh, friends and guests of our brother Carvel Wallace, Ian Clark, and family. I invite them to stand as we say a special hello and welcome to them. It is an honor to have you with us this morning. Uh, we would invite you, if you would not mind, for a few moments after the service. Uh, we'd like to get to know you a little bit better. So right after the service, invite all of our visitors to please come forward, and uh, we will usher you into a room where there are uh, one fellow who should say a banquet is waiting for you. Uh, but I will be honest and say some tastes and treats. But more important, an opportunity to meet with the leadership here and the members so we can get to know you a little better. If you have to slip out, certainly the, you're welcome to attend any time. A welcome has extended to you here from Grace. We want to say a special hello to uh, some folks who've been away for a while. Um, the Bethels are back, uh, Pastor Lyle and his family. And uh, it's good to have you guys back. I hope you were able to watch the service online. Did you guys get to watch the service online? 
Okay. Oh, okay. Go. You, you, you missed a good service. <laughs> and we also, I also saw Brother Ram, who is also back after a, a long travel. Thank you for God's safety and bringing you back to us. A uh, number of our students have already uh, returned to school, so let's continue to remember them in prayer. And uh, for those of you, if I've missed you and you have been away for a while, certainly uh, it's good to have you back home. We, we have a number of announcements that we want to bring into your hearing this morning. And um, you do notice that uh, Pastor Lyle is not here, but uh, you will hear from him a little later on in the service. Uh, he is attending a conference, uh, but he will bring uh, the, the Lord's message to you a little later, later on in the program. But we do want to recognize a couple of announcements for King's Court. Uh, Brother Naldo, you're going to allow me to just say them? Excellent. Uh, two very quick announcements and reminders for those of you in King's Court. Uh, in inviting you to participate, first of all, in a very important study on hermeneutics. And this is being uh, instructed by Pastor Alan Lee. So just to remind you, it starts this coming Monday. So if you haven't registered as yet, you need to get registered. We want to get as many of our young persons. Of course, not only are young persons invited to participate in that, but uh, this is a calling from King's Court to invite them to uh, be a part of this study. Uh, and there's another function coming up on January 14th, open mic night. And uh, that's uh, an important one. Please see any of the members of King's Court to assist you. And uh, you see the cost there. Uh, those of you who are between 18 and 35, I remember those years. Um, but uh, alas, I, I can't participate. But um, for those of you who fall in that grouping, please uh, remember to participate inside that. Um, I had the, the wonderful pleasure this morning to uh, visit the Christchurch Cathedral. Um, the Rotary Clubs of the Bahamas are celebrating 50 years. And uh, I, we were recognized by Dean Patrick Adley as he did the service this morning. And I noticed that he came up and did all of the important announcements and left the others inside the program for persons to read. And one particular important announcement he made was a, a congratulations to the members of the Valley Boys John Canoe Group <laughs> on, their, on their win. And I thought it would be wrong of me if I were not to do the same as he declared them the champions for the year 2012. And so, um, so I just thought I would do that as well, uh, just following his lead as he considered that to be something of prominence and something of importance. <laughs> we, want to, we want to say a, a special congratulations to, to Daniel and Sarah. Uh, <laughs> bouncing baby boy. Uh, his name is Benjamin Michael. And he was born on this past Wednesday, weighing a whopping seven pounds, six ounces. And they say both mother and son and father are well, including Grammy. Hey, Grammy. <laughs> Grammy is doing well. I got a very important text just a while ago, and I just wanted to make sure you guys get this text. No, it did not come from God Almighty, but I'm sure he is ordained today. Eh? So let me read this text to you guys. Congratulations to Naldo Williams and Laura Nielsen on their engagement on Monday, January 2nd, 2012. I invite them to stand. Congratulations, guys. I told you it was an important text. Right before I recognize the birthdays, I'm going to invite Pastor Hannah to come. Oh, Charles, you almost set me up with that announcement just before you call me. You, you know how I like romance. When, you know, I've been watching this couple for a little while. I believe I was there at first spark. Anyway, I could try to contain myself. Uh, Grace, I've been making the announcement. Um, Lamplighter Sunday will be Sunday the 22nd. That's two, that's two Sundays from now is when we will give the awards. If you are not finished and you are finished before the, by the 20th, you can, you're still eligible, but you need to call Maud and let her know what is happening. Now, we have sent out the forms online for our members to be able to print them out. 
and invite your co-workers, your neighbors, your family, your friends to participate. Grace, you know, we, we, we are trying to change a culture. We're trying to change a culture. And, you, you know, we do it one by one, you know. And we work very hard at trying to change things from a leadership standpoint. But not only the leaders are called to ministry. We are all called to ministry. Everyone can share their faith. I'm telling you, this is an excellent way. Most people I meet would like to read through the Bible. They just can't figure out when they're going to find the time. So we've systemized a way for them to be able to do it. I've done it several, many times, and I'm, uh, it can be done and it's very easily achievable with just 10 minutes put aside. Grace, please use that form. We're trying to register 500 people this year. It occurred to me if each of us reached out to two people and get two people to agree, we would far exceed that number. So please use the forms online. And those of you, by the way, Grace, if you're a member of Grace, let, let me just say this to you. I know it's a challenge for some of our older people because they don't figure, I don't learn to read and write, and that was enough, and that's uh, we're living in a different time. They're not the three R's anymore. There's the three R's and the C. You have to have computing skills. It's just part of the way the world is heading. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's just a must, you know? It's, it's the new literacy. And I encourage you. And I encourage you because I understand that my mother-in-law is now on Facebook. And so, you know, when I hear that, I, I say, well, it's over. It's over, you know? And the cutest thing was when she invited my wife to be a friend. So, um, and so, no, I'm saying that this is serious stuff because a lot of our communication is going to be taking advantage of technology now, okay? And so, please, it's, a, it's, it's not as hard as you think. It's actually easier than learning to read. The other thing I want to say to you, so Lamplighter Sunday is on the 22nd, two Sundays from now, to get your pins. You can qualify up to the 20th by calling more. And the second thing is this coming Wednesday will be our first night of prayer. Grace, you know, I am straining. I'm straining. I'm understanding where our struggle is. And, you know, I, I, I could bring it out. I understand where I, when it takes this much energy. And, and by the way, I'm not saying this to put a guilt trip on you. I'm saying this so that you could understand where we are losing the battle. Where we are losing the battle. You see, the battle we fight is literally one on our knees. It's one on our knees. And when we have to struggle as much as we do, and I know why, to get the church to come out to prayer, and I know why. It's because we have so many things tugging at us, tugging at our time, so many distractions. I understand that. But can't you see, Grace, that as important as those distractions may be, as important as they may be, it is precisely what we need to win the battle. So all the enemy has to do is pronounce in our minds how important those distractions are, how valuable they are, and how, if you miss them, it don't matter. You understand? Let me tell you something. If you go into war and, 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 and you have on the B-52 bombers, like about 16 men, to deploy those bombs, if you don't have the one man to push the button for the hatch door for the bombs to come out, the job all or the other, 15, is useless. You understand? So don't ever think your presence is not important. So Grace, we're appealing to you. We begin 7 o'clock. We want to start 7 o'clock. An hour and a half as a community, we're going to cry out to God. We're going to cry out to God because Lord knows the issues that we face in this country are not political. Stop looking for the political solution. They are spiritual. And I'm taking this long grace because this admonishment from the PCB that you get this is important.
We don't want to stand before God, those who sit around that table and say, you know, God, because we done jack up in a lot of areas. This is one we ain't adding to our jack of bliss, that we did not call this church to prayer. Do you understand me? So please, I ask you, I appeal to you as members to make sure you set that time aside on Wednesday night, that you are here on time for seven, and that for an hour and a half, we pray. Finally, I just want to give kudos to Brother Ram. You know, Brother Ram has this way of handing out these prayer cards at the beginning of the year. And many people have claimed victories from their prayer card. Well, Ram, because you've gone away and you stay too long, you miss one of the testimonies of one of the people who was saying that their blessing began with that prayer card. So continue what you're doing, my brother. Amen. Amen. Good work. Just as a, I mean, just to emphasize that point about the computer technology, Parents, if you do not know how to engage the computer right now, you're not going to be able to parent your children properly. That's where they communicate. As a matter of fact, that's where they live. So you need to learn those different multimedia, social networking, whatever all of those elements are. You need to get to know them. And so you can, when they try to pull one on you, you could uh, just pull it right back up and say, behave yourself. I'm so sorry. There's one more thing. Sure. Uh, you know we're participating the, this year as part of the United Easter program. That's going to happen beginning on Palm Sunday and run through that Holy Week. And uh, the choir rehearsals, uh, and this is my fault. I was so busy with so many things. I forgot to mention, has begun yesterday at Abundant Life, and it's being held every Saturday at Abundant Life. If you are interested in singing in the choir, Right now, please call Maud and I will send you a special bulletin of the information. I would like to encourage all people who are singers in the church to participate in that. We want Grace front and forward as part of this program. Thank you. That's a scary announcement just now, all those who are singers. But anyway. I, did, I didn't leave this one out, but certainly uh, we want to say, uh, continue keeping prayers, uh, our expected mothers, Ronquil, uh, Mutu, and uh, Allison Sands. This one is interesting because I just, right at a, 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 a service on January 1st, I saw Damien and I said to him, I am wishing for him this year a girl. And so to see this inside, I didn't even know she was expecting. So we'll see if I'm prophetic as we go through the year. We got a couple of persons who are celebrating their birthdays this week. Let's remember them in our prayers. Uh, give them a phone call. Uh, Elder Cardinal McCarty and Dante Gibson, Gibbs, sorry, uh, celebrating on the 12th. Uh, we have Bernadette Butler, Lisa Bain celebrating on the 11th, Demetria Stubbs and Randy Roll on the 10th, Margaret Major, Janelle uh, Freckle Freckleton on the 9th, and on the 8th, celebrating today, Carl Seymour, Brittany Camp, and Robert Southworth II. So happy birthday to those persons. Any one of those persons here today? There you go. Brittany's here too? Oh, we got we to gotta sing this on there. We got to sing happy birthday. Yeah, we got we to gotta strike that up. We got to strike that up ourselves. We got some of those celebrants right here today. As they celebrate their birthdays, happy birthday to you. May God continue to add his blessings on your lives. <laughs> Happy birthday to the persons who are celebrating their birthdays today. Persons now to be dismissed for Sunday school. Uh, Sunday school teachers, so please come up at this time as we dismiss our young persons. <laughs>
Just to come at this time and give thanks for the offering. Please stand. Shall we pray? Father God, we again thank you for your many blessings to us, your children. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give unto you. We thank you for the jobs you provide for us. We thank you for the provisions you give to us daily, for shelter, for comfort, for food. We give you thanks, O oh God. Father, this time where we get an opportunity to give back unto you, God, we pray that it will be used appropriately, that it will be used in order, and Father, we will be used to your glory, and Father, we will be used to build your, your work here on earth as we continue to prepare ourselves for heaven and the bound. Father, bless this time. Bless the offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, media team, I just want you to get ready. While the offering is being taken, uh, I just want to take this opportunity to, uh, to myself welcome uh, Janelle and family back. We truly missed you over the holiday. Um, uh, um, and while he would have liked to be back with us today also, Pastor Lyle has a conference which begins today and um, he, he tried to arrange his flights whereby he would have been able to be here with you this morning but as fate would have it uh, he was unable to make the arrangements so that he could successfully start his conference today unless he left first thing this morning which he did. However, um, we thank God we live in, a tech, in an age of technology, and so while he will be bodily missing, you know, people like to say, I'm there with you in spirit. Well, he is here this morning with us in more than just spirit, um, uh, and his full message for today will be delivered. And this is a good time for us to acknowledge the fine work of our technical team, uh, led by uh, Kofi Miller, who is in the back. Kofi, please stand so people can see you. And um, Kofi, you ain't standing. Stand up, Kofi. I could hardly see you. Um, uh, and Lex Roll, they lead the team. Lex is not here today. Um, uh, but also working very closely with them. Uh, um, Kayla Hilton, and I, I was forgetting her name all morning. Oh, Suzanne, you're going to kill me. Um, uh, and Suzanne Roll, uh, who faithfully, faithfully, since this ministry began, I think Suzanne was the first one coming on, then Kayla, and uh, we just want to take time to recognize them and remind you, Grace, please pray for these people. Please pray for these people. We're going to be highlighting prayers for ministry personnel for the rest of the month of January, and you'll be hearing a little bit more about what people do. But if we can just carve up the lights cut now. Of course, I've had, I've had an opportunity to preview Pastor Lyle's message, and it is truly a message so fitting for this time. And I would like you with all seriousness and all consideration because certainly from what I heard I was challenged and I know you're going to be challenged by the words of our senior pastor this morning God willing he will rejoin us next week and as I pointed out to him 
Well, you all know Lyle. As I pointed out to him, I said, Lyle, you know, some of the personal greetings you could do more personally when you get back. No, no, Pastor, and I got to say this now. This is on my heart now. So, of course, you will see Pastor Lyle in all of the fullness of Pastor Lyle during this presentation. May God bless you and challenge you as we present our senior pastor uh, on video to challenge us for the new year. Good morning and happy new year to the Saints of Grace Community Church. My family and I enjoyed a cold but snowless Christmas in South Dakota with Janelle's family members and were grateful for the time we had off. As you can well imagine, the time away was a bittersweet experience in that although it was a warm and pleasant experience of bonding with my in-laws during the festive season, it took me away from my beloved church community during the high point of the year. Students back from college, parties with church members and friends, festivities everywhere, and perhaps the most painful of all was to miss my little Miss Lyric Hannah, co-missionary, songbird extraordinaire, and a young woman I truly admire take her wedding vows to the handsome dapper Giorgio Knowles. Lyric and Giorgio, on behalf of my family members, we wish to give you our congratulations and to wish you all the best. May God grant you long life and happiness. Then the news began to come rolling into us as we were away of all the engagements that took place over the holidays. Christy McCarty and Wendell, Jason Knowles and Rolanda, and Naldo Williams and Alora. It left us wondering if there was something in the drinking water around Grace Community Church. Congratulations to all the newly engaged couples. Congratulations are also in order to Daniel and Sarah Besasu on the birth of their son, Benjamin Michael, born Wednesday, January the 4th, coming in at seven pounds and six ounces. Sadly, condolences are also in order, and we wish to extend them to Sister Patrice Ramming on the death of her nephew, Bruce Sands Jr., who was funeralized yesterday at Believer's Gospel Chapel. This year marks 21 years since I completed my training and internship in Chicago, and my 19th year in the pastoral ministry in the Bahamas, at least half of which I've served in the capacity of being senior pastor here at Grace Community Church. This year also marks our 20th year of marriage for Janelle and I, and if everything works out all right, my oldest child will be going off to college. A year of many milestones and anticipated changes, like many of you will be facing as well. Many of you in the business world have seen the need for further training, ed education, and enhancement to help current and or stay ahead of the curve. And the ministry is no exception to training. This year, monies have been budgeted for the leadership to take advantage of training opportunities that they may remain sharp and focused for the church's benefit. One such training opportunity for me has been the opportunity to attend this special high-level leadership training seminar for Christian apologetics with the Josh McDowell Ministries in Orlando, Florida. I had hoped to start the year off with you here at Grace with the Grace Church family, embracing you, greeting you personally with New Year's greetings, but plane schedules, flight times did not allow me to be able to leave after the service and still make it for the 7 a.m. start, 7 p.m., excuse me, start to the evening meetings. An unfortunate turn of events, but thanks to the beauty of technology, I am still able to speak and to bless the saints of God by means of this video broadcast. Before I get to my short message for today, let me personally thank Pastor Hannah and his worship team for the excellent service put on in my absence, some of which I was able to watch over the internet. Thanks also to Elder Cyril Pete for what I am told was an excellent New Year's Eve challenge. And to all of you that try to brighten this Christmas for others by a visit, a call, an invite to others to share a meal with, a love gift, and or the purchase of a practical gift to the hurting Christian families in Asia through the Gospel for Asia gift catalog. Thank you. May the Lord bless you richly by your service and bless, establish, and equip us for the, all the upcoming challenges that this new year will bring about. My message for today is entitled, New Commitments for the New Year. And it's my hope that indeed, as a result of today's message, that you are going to make some new commitments that will completely make the changes necessary for your life that will make this new year count. 
Well, it's that time of year again when, in a fit of optimism, many of you make great promises to yourself about what you're going to do for the new year, and we usually abandon them perhaps by the second or third week in February. This morning, in contrast, I want to talk to you about some resolutions, some commitments, which I guarantee will make a radical difference in your life and my life if we follow through on them. Here's what I want to suggest. If you will make four commitments that God in his word encourages you to make, I guarantee you that the start of 2012 will become one of the most significant events in your life. And here they are. Follow along in your programs. I've got left spaces for you to fill in. The first thing, commit yourself to forget your failures. Commit yourself to forget your failures. 2,000 years ago, one of the first Christian leaders, the Apostle Paul, gave this advice. Quote, Philippians 3, 13 through 14 says, Forgetting what is behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. End quote. That advice from God's word has stood the test of time. I don't know of any more relevant and practical advice for us at the start of 2012. God is here so that you don't have to live your life imprisoned by your past. All of us have failed in some way in our lives over the last year. Probably, we won't see our failures recorded for history on TV as some scandalized persons have done over the past year, but they are recorded in our hearts and in our minds, and we feel the sting and the pain of them. For many of us, our failures are painful memories. Maybe for you, it is a memory of how you failed in a relationship. You made the wrong decision, said and did the wrong things, and the relationship has ended. Some of you who are parents probably know that you failed your children in some way. Many of us are aware that we have failed our parents. And it's more than likely that many of us know that most of all, we have failed ourselves in some ways. What God's word is saying is that we must not allow ourselves to be bogged down by our past failures. That we are not to dwell on our past so that it stops us moving forward into the future that God has for us. I think that the start of a new year is a good time for you to rise to the challenge. To say to yourself, I am going to, with God's help, forget my past. I'm going to stop torturing myself about what I did or didn't do last year. This year is a good time to stop being chained to your past failures. God is saying here in his word that he doesn't want you to go through your life branding yourself as a failure. On the cross, Christ died so that he could forgive us. When we become Christians on purpose, that forgiveness becomes a reality in our lives. When we have received Christ's forgiveness, it allows us to forgive ourselves and to forget our failures. Do you need to do that right now, my friend? Right here this morning, do you need to accept Jesus' forgiveness over the failures of your life and then forgive yourself? Let's move to our next commitment. Commitment two, commit yourself to give up your grudges. Commit yourself to give up your grudges. I want you to listen to these words from the book of Colossians because in that you'll hear the second challenge I believe that God wants you to rise to if you want to make 2012 a significant turning point in your life. Here's what Colossians 3.13 says. Bear with each other and forgive each other whatever grievance you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. What a powerful bit of scripture. Remember our theme. Commit yourself to give up your grudges. And here is the word of God. there, plain for us to understand. Did you catch that challenge? God, in these words, is challenging you directly and personally to give up your grudges. That is what he means when he says, forgive each other whatever grievances you may have against one another. Now, what's a grudge? A grudge is a deep, ongoing resentment that we cultivate in our hearts against someone else. A grudge is an unforgiving spirit that leads to unforgiving attitudes and unforgiving actions. Now, I know you know what I'm talking about. Harboring a grudge is about nursing a dislike for someone. 
What you need to know is that grudges are dangerous because they're destructive. Grudges destroy families. Grudges destroy marriages. Grudges ruin friendships. And friends, grudges split churches. Let's be honest enough to admit that one of the scandals of the church is the grudges that Christians hold against one another. Today, if you know that you're holding a grudge against someone, then God has something to say to you. Give it up. Give it up. Friends, there are certain times of the year that make things easier to do. It's easy to restore relationship around Christmas time because it's all about forgiveness. It's easy to start fresh at the beginning of a year because it, there's a newness about everything. Friends, there's no better time than now to give up these grudges. I want to remind you that grudges are not just destructive, they're also self-destructive. When you hold a grudge against someone, you will hurt yourself as much, and perhaps more, you will hurt the person you're holding it against. Make no mistake about it. If you keep harboring a grudge, then it will eventually destroy you. If not physically, certainly emotionally and spiritually. It will make you a bitter and twisted person. The book of Job in Job chapter 21 describes people who, quote, have no happiness at all. They live and die with bitter hearts, end quote. Do you really want that to be engraved on your tombstone? Do you remember the parable that Jesus told about the servant who was forgiven a huge debt by the king and then refused to forgive someone who owed them a tiny amount? Jesus said his unforgiving spirit landed him in prison. Max Lucado, taking up on this um, parable, makes this interesting comment in one of his books. He says, unforgiving servants always end up in prison. Prisons of anger, guilt, and depression. God says to you in his word, don't sentence yourself to prison. Set yourself free. Give up your grudges. Quote, forgive each other whatever grievance you may have against one another. Whatever grievance. According to God's word, the way you give up a grudge is to forgive a grievance. Notice what God is saying here. He isn't asking you to ignore whatever the person has done to you. Friends, I'm not sure that's possible. He isn't asking you to pretend it didn't happen. He doesn't even ask you to condone it and to pretend it didn't matter. What God asks you to do is to forgive the grievance. Friends, let me say this. It's possible as Christians to forgive grievances. I'll tell you why. Sometimes we think that to forgive a grievance is to let somebody off the hook. Friends, let's be clear. You let them off your hook, but they're not off God's hook. God is a sovereign God, and the judge of the earth will always do right. Sometimes your petty grievance towards them will hold back God's greater justice coming into play. So get your grievance out of the way, get your grudge out of the way, and leave them to the Lord. But you exercise a spirit of forgiveness and allow God to judge rightly, not for you to have your way that may be actually over the top. Friends, God asked us to forgive the grievance. And that means to acknowledge how wrong and painful what was done to you was, but to decide to forgive the person who did the wrong to you anyway. I'm absolutely certain that there are people here in the congregation who need to give up their grudges and receive the grievance, and excuse me, forgive the grievance that they have against someone else. Some of you need to forgive the grievance that you have against your parents for what they did or didn't do to you. Some of you need to forgive your children for the same reason. Some of you need to forgive a partner for emotional and physical abuse. Some of you need to give up the grudge you have against someone at work because of the way they have treated you. Some of you need to give up the grudge that stems from an argument you had with someone. And some of you probably need to give up grudges you have against other people here in the congregation. God says that that deep-seated resentment you have against that person has to go. What better time to make that difficult decision to forgive than at the start of a new year? Now, don't tell God you can't forgive, because what you really mean when you say that is that you don't want to forgive. If Christ can forgive you of your sin despite it involving the pain of the cross, then surely you can give up your grievance, whatever the cost, to yourself. The question is, 
Will you do it? The third commitment. Commit yourself to restore your relationships. Commit yourself to restore your relationships. Sometimes when I turn on my computer, a little window pops up and asks if I want to run a check to see if my programs are all working properly. God in his word issues a very similar invitation. It is the invitation not to check to see if our computer allows, uh, our computer software is working properly, but rather to check whether our personal relationships are working properly. Here's how the Lord issues that challenge. He says in Romans 12, 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. As far as it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. The important phrase here is, as far as it depends on you. God, by using that phrase, is personally challenging each one of us to do all that we can to restore our relationships. The Lord wants you to do everything you can to restore any relationship that have gone wrong in your life. Some relationships might have gone wrong in your life because of what other people have done. And they might well not want that relationship restored. That's a fact of life. And God recognizes this. And that's why he starts off by saying, as far as, as it's possible. But let's be honest. Some of our relationships have gone wrong because of what we have done, haven't they? When God's word says here, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone, it is saying, if you have caused a rift in the relationship, then you have a responsibility to do everything you can to restore it. That everything includes the one thing we all probably find most difficult of all things to do, and that is this, asking for forgiveness. Asking for forgiveness. I wonder how many marriages represented here are not all they should be or could be simply because someone won't say, won't say, absolutely won't say, I'm so sorry, I was wrong, will you please forgive me? How many marriages could be better if someone would just bring themselves to say that? I'm certain that some of us who are married need to ask forgiveness for harsh words and cutting remarks that have really wounded our partners over the years. Maybe God is saying to some of you that this change of year is the right time to restore those relationships that have been ruined by going and sincerely saying that you are sorry for those angry words or those selfish and unthoughtful actions. One commentator writes, restitution deals with more than just property. You know, there's a tendency for us to think that when we hear restitution, we just think about properties being restored. But friends, this commentator writes, it is also going back and making things right for the hurtful things I've said and done. Restitution is asking forgiveness for harsh words, a quick tongue, or cutting remarks. Some of you will need to ask forgiveness from a brother you hurt, a mother you cause heartache to, or a former spouse who you maligned. Restitution is confessing and seeking forgiveness from an old business partner, a neighbor, or a roommate. It is admitting my past errors in a relationship and humbly seeking forgiveness from the one I've hurt. And it's harder to make personal restitution than property restitution." End quote. Make no mistake, it will be hard to do, but one of the most significant things that you can do to mark the new year is not to set off fireworks as they do in some place, but to admit that your past errors in relationships have affected and hurt another person and to humbly seek forgiveness from them, the ones you've hurt. Will you rise to the challenge and make the commitment to restore your broken relationships in this new year? I encourage you to do so. And finally, our fourth commitment. Commit yourself to turn your back on your transgressions. Commit yourself to turn your back on your transgressions. One American Civil War story speaks of a leading Confederate general named General Pettigrew. After the war was over and the slaves had been set free, many slaves decided to stay with their former master and continue to do what they were told. They were set free, but they chose to live lives as slaves. 
The New Testament says that that is exactly how many Christians choose to live. Christ died to set them free. The Holy Spirit has given them the power to live free. But just like those former slaves, they still choose to obey their old master, sin. Listen to these words from Romans chapter 6, verse 2 and following. Quote, Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to its lustful desires. We are no longer slaves to sin. <clears throat> that is the last challenge that I believe, if you will rise to make, will make this new year truly significant for you. When God says, quote, do not let sin control the way you live, do not give in to its lustful desires, he is issuing a challenge to turn your back on your transgressions. A photocopier engineer, when he turns on your machine and sees, quote, error code flashing on that machine, he can almost guarantee that he already knows what the problem is. He knows that each model photocopier usually has a particular way of going wrong that happens time and time and time again. That is a principle that is true in the spiritual world as it is in the electronic world. Christian writers used to talk about something called a besetting sin or besetting sins. What they meant by that thing, this besetting sin, were particular sins that a particular Christian was prone to doing time and time again. For most of us, when we were saved, we gave up certain sins rather easily. But there are other things that we know are wrong that we really battle with for most of our lives. Those are what are called besetting sins. Many of us end up choosing to give in to our besetting sins and end up living double lives. Some time ago, I was at a wedding ceremony, and I saw a man with a, a, a big growth on his neck. And I wondered, with all of the new surgeries that they have, if that could be removed. But I overheard a conversation, and I heard someone saying concerning him, he won't do anything about it. He has just learned to live with it. That sums up too many Christian attitudes to their besetting sin. They won't do anything about it and they learn to live with it. I have to ask you, is your spiritual life crippled because you've learned to live with a besetting sin? Do you have a quick temper that you constantly give into? Or a caustic tongue that loves to assassinate other person's character or wound their feelings? Have you learned to live with that critical judgmental attitude you know is wrong? Is there a sexual sin that you keep on giving into? Have you been going too far with your boyfriend or your girlfriend? Have you been secretly logging on to pornographic sites on the internet time and time again? Besetting sins. God is here in his word challenging you and I to turn our back on that sin, whatever it is. To stop letting it control the way we live. To stop giving into it. He wants you to stop obeying your old master. Let's be clear about this. Jesus' death broke the power of sin. The Holy Spirit can give us the power to resist sin. And all that means that you don't have to go into the new year still being defeated by the same old sin. You can have the victory over it. God said that you are no longer a slave to sin, so don't live like, don't live like one and don't act like a slave to sin. If you will ask for God's forgiveness for your sin and his power to resist that sin, then this year can be for you not just a new era in history, but a new era in your spiritual life. Don't miss that opportunity. In conclusion, it all, it all boils down to this. Will this new year be just a calendar-changing event for you? Or are you willing to rise to those challenges from God's Word and make these commitments and so make a life-changing event in your life. Are you willing to make these four commitments for 2012? Will you commit your life to forget your failures? Will you commit yourself to give up your grudges? Will you commit yourself to restore your relationships? And will you commit yourself to turning your back on transgressions and besetting sins? This new year will really be something to celebrate if you make forgiveness the heart 
of what it's all about for you. Have the courage, right here today, to forgive yourself and forget the past. To forgive others who have hurt you and forgive whatever grievances you have against them. To ask for forgiveness from those who have hurt and as far as it depends on you, live at peace with them. And to ask for God's forgiveness and no longer be a slave to sin. Shall we pray? Father, I want to ask that you would be with your saints here at Grace Community Church in power and in great glory. Get glory from our lives as we, like Paul, would uh, forget the things that lie behind and reach forward in this new year to the things that lie ahead. Father, the writer of Hebrews tells us to lay aside the, 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 the encumbrances, the things that so easily entangle us, and, and to, to run on ahead. Help us, Lord, as we would look at the catalog of our lives and, and see where our lives have been held back by grudges, by failures, by sins, by broken relationships. Lord, help us to be free of them, to deliver ourselves of those things by forgiving ourselves, by seeking out others and asking and giving forgiveness, by restoring relationships, and Lord, by being free of besetting sins. Give us victory this year. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us courage to live new lives that you may be edified through them. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. What a message, huh? What a challenge. What a challenge. Grace, we've been challenged by our senior pastor to look past our pain. That's really what is required. The Word of God challenges us to look past our pain. Nobody knows more than the Lord Jesus Christ Himself how much you may have suffered an injustice how much you may have suffered a betrayal how let down you have been by others but you know it's not sometimes until we can get outside of our pain that we could begin to properly evaluate that which caused us pain. And sometimes the evaluation is simply that the person just intended to do evil to you. No, no other reason. They didn't make a mistake. They just intended, as we say in Bahamian vernacular, to jack you up. That was the intention. Oh, but until you could look at the pain and give it over to the Lord, you could never get to the place like Joseph, who was messed up by none less than his flesh and blood brothers. That you could get to the place where you could say, you know what? You intended it to me for evil but God you see sometimes the very pain you are going through was brought about because God needed it to bring about a greater action but you know sometimes in our smallness sometimes in our being so wrapped up in our current experience 
we can no longer believe that all things work out for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. We forget that. And maybe it's because some of us ain't his purpose to begin with and we know that. That we carry on with our pain. But we are appealing to you. We are appealing to you. We know that Satan has an axe at the root, at the roots of Grace Community Church. And he's chopping feverishly to cut the tree down. We appeal to you. Give up your grudges. We ain't asking you to act like ain't nobody hurt you or ain't no, no that ain't what we asking. We are asking you to trust the God. A question was put to him. Shall not the God of all the earth do right? And of course the resounding answer is yes. If you've been suffering in pain and you know you're vexed with everybody we ask you to come into our offices we've seen people do it we've sat down with members who've come in and we've made ourselves available to listen to every cry they had and when they leave the office their problem wasn't finished but they felt better because at least they sat with people who they now knew understood sister brother we understand why you're so vexed but the answers we gave them are the answers we're giving you through this message today and through this appeal right now if you've been destroyed this year with a sense of betrayal somebody just messed you up they didn't act the way you thought you would act I want you to stand but just before you stand I just want to say this one thing too sometimes when you feel that people have really messed you up and maybe they did it's not because they intended to Sometimes they were just trying to help. They were just trying to help. Sometimes we were the ones who initiated the invitation to them to help. I know because I've been a victim of this so much now. I, I scared to do seriously. As a pastor, I scared to get involved with anything. Because after the leadership of the spirit and everything else, you give the best results you could and then you say, well, now, how I am a part of the enemy in this situation? But the Lord still told me this year, Tinkle, I know that's how you're feeling, but be brave, be courageous. Because those who want to understand will understand and those who don't want. So I say, that's why we need to forgive. There's some people who truly want to be part of your life and help and do the right thing, but you're holding them to your pain because you haven't given your pain over to the Lord. And so now I ask you to please stand. If you are in that kind of pain, and I, I the first one to stand because I gone through so much pain last year. Oh, but I thank God I determined, Lord, I don't want to be in that prison, a grudge. I don't want to be in that prison. You see someone and you got to turn the other way. Or you, I ain't want to be in that prison. Because I don't live comfortably there. I ask you to please stand. If you know that's where you are, you know you're not. I got some grudges I got to give up. I got some pain I got to get rid of. I ask you to stand. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Stand. But stand to say, Lord, even though that's how I feel, I don't want to continue feeling that way. I want this to be a fresh beginning. Because guess what? I'm here to let you know some new things could come to get on your nerves this year. That wasn't there last year. So you just about get make room for it. Stand. 
you're saying by standing God, I need you to help me to become a forgiving person. I need you to help me with my pain because my pain is killing me, it's weighing me down. Okay. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you so much by your own example. The first words recorded from the cross, Father forgive them for they do not know what they have done. Father we ask the same for those who have hurt us, abused us, neglected us, denied us, betrayed us, lied on us. Father we ask you to forgive them. They do not know what they have done to us. But Father, those of us who are crushed, let us understand that the crushing of men is the shaping of God. Men may seek to crush us, but in that crushing, you are simply forming us into a newer, a better, and a greater shape. Give us the hearts, the will, and the courage to trust you to endure the crushing that we may be shaped into something better. Father, we pray for Grace Community Church and the grudges, the acts of grudges that Satan is using to cut down this beautiful tree. Oh, Father, help us to put away our axes. Help us to look to you for our justice, to look to you for our peace, to look to you, Father, to sort it out right. Lord, give us forgiving hearts, forgiving spirits. Help us not to go on crushing people, but to value people the way you did. Give us the same spirit you had with Peter. When you came back from the grave, you said, go tell all of my friends and Peter who denied me. I really want to see him bad because I miss him. Give us that kind of spirit this year, Lord. Now, Father, we ask your blessing on all of those here. We, we put before you every care. You know the concerns, the job concerns, the family concerns, the relationship concerns, concerns for wisdom. How do I do this? Lord, we pray for those who are alone and lonely. We pray for those who are ungrateful that they will see all of the rewards you've brought to them. But Father, we give ourselves over to you that we will be made ready for ministry because our hearts are truly sold out to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go and serve the Lord. Our elders, please, uh, we just want to ask our uh, mothers of grace to please assemble in the greeting room today on behalf of the leadership because the leadership something has come up and we have to go into immediate conference uh, leaders all leaders please go immediately to the conference room please do not stop do not stop a leader today all elders uh, we ask our deacons and other ministry leaders if you can go upstairs on our behalf to greet our guests we are sorry guests that we can't meet with you personally today as a leadership, but you will be meeting our leaders and you will be made to feel an extraordinary grace welcome today. Please greet each other as you leave and go and serve the Lord. Thank you.